Scouter is coming out soon, guys. And it's actually not called a Scouter. It's called Machinist. So Machinist is known for a transformation class. Also have alternative human form build. This is exactly like the Shadow Hunter. You guys probably know about this already. Looking at a bunch of other uh, articles and stuff. So let's talk about the beginning stuff first. Real quick, like in five minutes. The Machinist has normal drone joint skill and hypersync skill. Hypersync skill is like your demonic skills for Shadow Hunter. When you transform, you get you just get to have different skill sets, the six skills. It's simple and hard to mess up. So it's super uh, easy to make builds out of them. Even newbies can do it. So there are three known builds. I don't know if there's a fourth one. There's an evolution legacy build. You guys know this, the transformation build. It's like the demonic impulse build. At the moment, I kind of want to focus on one build uh, to go into it a little bit deeper instead of just telling the beginning stuff because there's not going to be good information if you had tried to deal both classes. So we're just going to be talking about very, very, very basic stuff for the AT build. So we're going back to pros and cons again. In this section, the, the pros are the same as I talked about. One of the easiest classes to play. And then you have simple build choices and it's very cheap. You need two gems only. And this is the same case for mandatory tripods. Scouter only needs three tripods to be at level five. So this particular point, the cheaper class engraving, the reason why I put as cheaper is because you can either go level one or three. But the point is, Shadowhunter requires level three. If a class requires level one, which is the Scouter, it's infinitely cheaper than something that requires just level three. So that was the point by cheap. So I, I, I guess I could change this word to efficient. So you have less side content requirement as well, which is uh, you have you need less skill point and then you need less runes. So you have less consumable uses. This is transfer mill only. This is the exact same point uh, as blue gun lancer. Blue gun lancer rarely uses pots. And you guys know why, because they're very tanky. This is the same case for scouters as well. And the con side, he's the lowest vitality bracket. So if you see it, when scouters transform to human mode, like when you transform back, they tend to die a lot because their uh, vitality bracket is same as Deadeye and Gunslinger. And these guys also have low ceiling. Uh, they have the lowest, uh, transformation classes have the lowest ceiling. They're not supposed to do more damage on classes that goes 11 gems. Uh, it makes no sense if it does. Everyone will be playing scouters if that was the case. And tiring if you play for a very long time, another one. Uh, so this is a piano class for both classes, AT and, and transformation. The legacy class, uh, it's high APM, you have to press a bunch of keys, you have to be using your finger a lot, so like, might get, uh, might your hand get, your hand gets tired. If I play it scouter all day, my hand does get tired. What I have said before, it might be boring and repetitive for some people, so watch this out. So someone in chat said a very good point. If you think Shadowhunter is boring and repetitive, scouter is literally the same thing, but it's just lasers. If you think that it's not going to be fun, don't pressure yourself leveling your scouter to like make gold or something. There's no skins or glow in transformation. That's a con too. And then you need a high uptime required to do sufficient DPS. So basically this class, in order for you to do average DPS compared to the 10, the 11 gem class, in order for you to do decent damage, you have to have a high uptime, very, very high uptime. So you always gotta try it out. I mean, I'll show it to you. I'll show you everything about the legacy scouter and say why is a high APM, why is high uptime important, okay? So known builds here, legacy build only has one build. It's just one skill set, and then you have spec, and then crit, and with hallucination, there's no other builds. I will share you another build that is like really cheap, because I know NA market's all janked up. I can give you some options that you can do. There's a 332 or 422, but this is basically mean three yellow skill, three blue skill, and two purple skill or four yellow skill, two blue skill, and then uh, two purple skills. Basically, that's a skill amount, like the leveled skill. And the build variable is they usually go high crit and then a little bit on swift. The higher the crit is, the higher the ceiling is because you can go dominion or salvation to cover up the attack speed and stuff. However, if you don't have high level cooldown gems, you lower that crit and then you put it on swift. And then you go keep going salvation or the cheapest one is like you go half half with swift and stuff and then you go hallucination so that you don't have to worry about uh critting as much so over here is an example of like what kind of accessories you need for that ratio uh I, i've also included bracelets and you guys don't have bracelets yet so if you guys are confused about what's the actual ratio without it is you just minus 100 on both of them so it'd be 1700 and 1500 uh 500. 
So this is going to be existing for every single classes that I do. Basically the things that I've thought about, you know, DPS type, consistent, combat stat type, spec crit, and then you have the APM. The APM stuff is based on how many buttons you actually press in your fight. So gold efficiency, I put it as maximum because I don't think there's any cheaper class out there that is cheaper than Scouter. If their job is to make gold in this game and sell gold, Korea, Korean people actually do that. Even though if it's against TOS, like people still do it. It's like a gray area. They make like 10 scouters and they just they just rotate gems. So this character is known for rice characters. Uh, side content requirement is 1.5 because you just need the wealth runes for it. And difficulty is 1 out of 5 because this is one of the easiest class and I actually uh, recommend starting players to play him. We're going to talk about the legacy build. So this video is going to be focused on the legacy build. I will, I will talk about everything that I know about this particular class because I played it long enough. The playstyle is utilizing drone skills and collaborative skills, this is joint skills, to gain core energy as soon as possible. And then you have aggressive, consistent DPS during transformation mode. This is rotation of six skills. So you have to understand the proper cycle as well. I can show it to you here. So if I use a, if I use just the E, he just does a spin like that. But if I use a Q and then E, he does another move like that, right? And for our skill though, what it actually does is it just it just takes away the little bit of the animation. So the R skill itself is a little bit longer, but if you use the Q and R, it removes that uh, initial animation at the start to probably give uh, a faster animation. This is the same case. This is the same case for something like Q and W as well. And this is the same case for spacebar too. You can use a spacebar and have the same case, have the same effect. And we're, we're probably gonna talk about it again later. The definition of aggressive, right, is when you dodge something, maybe press an E to actually do more damage. You gotta squeeze in more damage as uh, as much as you can. So landing each will drop a cooldown by flat 0.5 seconds. What does this mean? So basically, if I use my other skills, it drops by 0. 0.0 seconds every time I land a skill, right? So which it goes into the aggressive consistent damage on the transformation mode. You squeeze in much as many red skills as you can during this 20 second transformation. So if you get hit or grabbed and lose a shield, I wrote it wrong. You lose transformation. You lose your meter to zero. So if you have the engraving, you lose, you get the payback. If your transformation finishes. So you get the payback of 40% so that you can transform faster. The benefit of Scouter compared to Shadowhunter is when you transform back, you can transform, uh, you can hypersync again at a much faster pace. So when this meter runs out, you get this back, right? So meter gain ranking, this is obvious. You have the raid missile, baby drones, and you have the flare, and then you have, uh, this case is just a, a meter gain, but you don't usually use the purple skills for meter gain, but you will in the earlier stages. But you use uh, this energy buster for stagger purposes most of the time. Now, the quick transformation requirement. This is actually pretty important. So in order for you to transform with two drone skills, you need 177, you need 1,771 spec in order for you to transform with two skills. My actual build is 1796. So if I give you an example. So if I transform back, what this means is if I transform back, when you have the 40% back, what happens is if I land the S skill, if I land the D skill, I, I can transform back if you have enough and then you have both from on legendary and then well from on heroic so whatever you guys do in na it's always going to be three drone skill transformation so the highest spec that you can ever get uh for this particular for na is 500 plus 300 so everyone's gonna have like around 1700 i guess so let's just say you have 1700 spec Theoretically, it's going to be like highest uh, relics uh, with the quality, but most people are not going to have that. So the realistic amount of a very high spec scouter is going to be 1650. The reason why I think it's going to be 1650 is because you don't buy high quality accessories. Unless you're like a diehard scouter main, I have never seen scouters bring super high quality accessories. So you guys think this can fit a little harder, right? So then let's put it down. But actually, I wanted to check if it's if it's possible to, to to transformation anyway. So let's say you have a perfect spec, perfect spec ready without the brochado stuff, and then I have two 
uh, wolf runes here. So let's see if I can transform in two drones. I mean, uh, well, you can't, well, you can't, because you need 1771, right? So technically this. So you have this much left here. That, this is how it usually works. So regardless of what you do, you need three skills to transform. And then you only need 192 spec for this. That's actually really low, right? Let's continue with the existing meta builds. I will talk about the spec stuff at the build section as well. So um, hold on to questions for a bit. So you have the main skills here, the three meter gains, and then you have the utility, you have the stagger, you have the meter gain, shielding, energy stagger, and counters. Instead of looking at this particular sheet, I will go over every single skill. Bullet Hill is used by uh, AT Scouter sometimes, but Legacy Scouter doesn't use it. So we're going to focus only on Legacy Scouter. So if you're wondering, for example, this particular overcharged battery is used by AT Scouter, but I'm not gonna talk about it at all. This particular skill, is the most important thing uh you do two rolls this is called mobile shot you kind of level up your you want to level up your tripods or you can level up cooldown too it's a preference if you level up your tripod on the movement you just roll much further right then close and you have the speed buff where if after you roll you are going to increase 19 19.2 percent on attack speed and movement speed this is so important this is one of the most important tripods for at scouter and i think legacy is really good to invest on it too and the third tripod increases another roll so the reason why the third tripod is on an additional roll is because if you have adrenaline one two three you get three stacks immediately this is why this skill is very important so sometimes you add in the runes here for like let's say quick recharge you can do that kind of stuff for at scouter because it happens on every time but the reason why there's no runes here it's because you stack it up on transformation skills. So whoever, so if you guys are wondering about like why there's no runes, it's because runes and the human form is useless, except the wealth runes. So let's move on. These, this skill is used for AT Scouter. So backflip strike, you have option between backflip strike and avalanche, right? So everyone's been using backflip strike before avalanche because avalanche didn't have counter before. So in this case, you would level this to seven, right? If you level up to seven, when you're going backwards, you're super armored. So basically you get the level two, level one of this particular tripod, the second one, and then you have the first one. This part is the counter, this part, that's the shoulder check. If you press it twice, you flip back. Watch out though, this tripod here, it doesn't increase the initial dash. It's actually pretty shit. If you level it up, only the back flip increases the backwards increases. So you go like all the way over here or something like that. So this is actually a very useless skill. Uh, you don't need any tripods here. Avalanche, same case, you have the tenacity here and then you have the damage skills here too. The reason why I swatch, uh, switched to Avalanche is because the tenacity only works when you're flipping back like that, right? That's the tenacity when you're flipping backwards. But Avalanche, you get tenacity when you're smashing forward so the problem with avalanche is the the distance is shorter but if i use the backflip it goes a lot further it hits them you saw that right so the backflip hits the front side but avalanche is much shorter and also i leveled it up to max because i have the tripods for it if you add in the full tripod it actually does decent damage uh, next one so those are the counters and then you have the pulse fire so the pulse fire the reason why i have this is because this used to be Annihilation Mode, which we're going to cover it up later. But three skills is usually enough to transform. Therefore, instead of adding a fourth skill, which is the Annihilation Mode, this skill is often used for synergy. Uh, but when you transform, you get that six, you, you provide 6% synergy attack power to your party mate. Uh, but when you transform back, you're in that human mode. So if you land this particular attack, you're going to provide that attack synergy for 13 seconds. You're going to have a better uptime for it. Let's say you're not transferring, not giving that synergy to your party, right? So sometimes you want to use it to keep that synergy up. Uh, NA players don't use this because you won't have enough room uh, because you will need to focus on transforming first. At the same time, this actually does good DP, uh, stagger as well. So the blue skill, you don't use any of these. This one was also an option. I tried it out, the active pulse. 
So what Active Pulse does is this particular tripod on the second row, it gives you shield. I've tried it and some people do use it. So for example, I have a free slot. I have a free slot here because I don't need it. So this should have been my pulse fire, right? So look at this. So I do that and I get another shield. And this particular shield applies to allies as well. I tried using it and then I didn't like it, but some, might, some guys might like it. Because the thing is, if I press the button over here, he still does it around me. It, I thought it was going to be great, but it's actually not that great. So if I wanted to give a shield to my party mate, I need to move my drone separately and then press the E button like this. Some people do use it, but I just wanted to say it's like an option. It's not a meter gain because I don't think the meter gains that much. It's like only a tiny bit. Now you have the flare beam. This is the least amount of importance on the meter gain, but this is also another choice too. If you're going to have the burn tripod or you're going to have the cooldown tripod. So if you have the burn tripod, what happens is it leaves a residue on the burning. So it actually activates if you happen to have like a, a that that requires additional ticks for uh, like let's say hallucination or something like that, right? And then you have the core energy. This is the most important tripod, guys. The core energy uh, is into in three total blue skills. So you have the core energy here, and then you have the core energy here, and then you have the core energy here. Core energy tripod is the most important one. That's why you only need three. Uh, you only need three tripods for Scouter. Now the next one, the baby drone. This one, you if you don't have uh, enough crit, you would use this one. But it's a, it's a, it, this is also a preference. So you're gonna have a larger explosion so that you can land your baby drone, right? Or are you going to uh, you just want more crit? And then you have the core energy. And then this particular one is uh, throwing the drones at once you don't want this one because it it, it kind of like stays there in peace like that you want to transform fast right so you would have this uh, tripod instead and then you have the last one the raid missile you have the organ missile it increases the missiles by two like it doubles it and then you have the large missiles that's what i've used most of the time but even this one most some people use this but some point some people also use this as well because um just it, it, it makes uh, the missile is a little bigger, so it kind of had me uh, landing it easier. But some people are recommending something like the first one for more damage. My my thought process of a scouter is when you're in human mode, you're not doing damage anyway. If your top priority is transforming, why not turn all the tripods into something that you can transform? So that's like my thought process for it. But some 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 guys go like, oh, the human scouter actually does decent damage. So let's squeeze more damage while you're in human mode too. So there's two two different pro uh, processes. Now, annihilation mode, most people will have this uh, if you are in a three, three drone transformation. No one really uses the core energy one, and I'll show you why first. So you see how I'm spinning like that? <laughs> Dude, every time I see this skill, I'm like laughing, dude. It's like, you're, you're, you're doing this. This is what you do in this skill. The reason why most people use this instead, uh, on the a first one, I don't know what this is going to be called, but what this skill does, it turns it into a hold skill. Like that. Let's say you have this much bar left, right? And then all your skills are in cooldown. This skill is perfect to just fill it up a little bit. Like that, let it go, and then transform. That's the usage of this skill. That's why it's a really good skill to have to uh, add in a little bit more safeness on your transformation. So you have the escape as well. Escape is super simple. Uh, this is also a preference. So if you have, you know, this particular tripod here, and then you have two choices, fly over the guardian, or you can move around and fly. Uh, and then you have the shield here. So if you use this, I get shield for eight seconds. Uh, let me show you the different one. The second tripod in the middle, you jump over the guy like this, right? Uh, so there's two preferences. Would you like to go over the boss like that? Or would you like to tap it and just get the shield? That's, a, the, that's the two different preferences. Okay, energy buster. This is, you, this is often used for... Uh, the overwhelm rune like this is used for stagger so basically this particular tripod what it says is you do it as if you overcharged it by a regular attack so this is the overcharged laser but since i have the tripod the energy buster starts overcharged and then you have the flame one and then you have the uh lightning one i think it doesn't really matter 
Uh, I guess you can even use tenacity if you want because while you're charging, if you get hit, you would fly away. I mean, this is not for damage, so... And it says Meltdowner, what this tripod says, if you have used it and overcharged it, it gives you additional hits and additional damage, right? So you would always want this because you're already overcharged from the first tripod. Cool, so all that skill, that's it. So uh, most people do have it this way, this particular build. So my R would be the counter, the avalanche, right? And then my Q would be the roll, and then the W, and then the E would for be um, filling that last little bit of the energy. And then my A skill would be the stagger. So when you transform back, so you transform, you transform, do DPS, you transform back, W, S, and while the S is going, you hit it a little bit, and then you S, W, you have your full stack already, and then your beater fills up, and then you transform again. But this is started from zero. And when you get that energy back, you always see it on my stream too. You When you, when you transform back, press that W, then press the S, and press the D, and then you press R for this, and then you transform right away. It's only like a couple seconds, but I had the shield for that time too. So when you're in human form, you usually do mechanics, as in like you need to stagger. You want to be you want to be doing stagger on human mode, because you do a little bit more stagger on the human mode if you happen to have overwhelm rune on pulse fire and uh, energy buster. But you usually put one overwhelm rune on energy buster only. So that covers the human form skills. Now let's cover, I mean, there's only six skills here and uh, most of the skills are very easy. Uh, we will talk about, we'll come back to the skills later on because I have the cycle explanation as well. So you have the Q, W, E, R, A, and S, right? The one that does the most damage is S and R skill. So you have S skill and then you have the R skill. These two are the skills that does the most damage. What does that, so what does that mean? Your skill, for R and S needs to rotate as much as you can. And as that as that also being provided, your Q and E is also a combo, right? And then you have the W for just a, as a filler, and then your A is also a filler. You always start Q, E, and Q to E, and then R or S. The reason why you do that is because if you use Q and E, you get two stacks of the legacy. So every two every stack with the sync skill, you get 2% damage increase. So you always start with Q and E, and if you press S or R, you activate it with the stacks uh, stacks applied with two of these skills. So sometimes if you want to do that, you can just press the W to keep it three stacks and then press the R again. But the reason why people are keep spamming skills like this way, you see how I'm just spamming that W, spamming that R, and then I spam Q and then I spam Q E again. The reason why I'm doing this is because you have to be doing something every time because you have to land skills to get that cooldown, to get that 0.5% cooldown. You have to use all the skills. That's why sometimes when I was aggressive playing Scouter, I die sometimes because let's say I'm attacking, I'm being very aggressive DPS, very aggressive DPS and I get hit and I die. That happens sometimes. So a better Scouter player squeezes in much, DP, much DPS as they can, even including during spacebar, press that E to get that in and then reset cooldown and then presses it again and then press E again and then you press W and then press S and then press Q and R. That's how they do it. People think that this is boring, but I think this is fun. The only counter the uh, Transformation Scouter has is the R skill. It's a long range counter. It's a, it's a decent counter. However, this counter sucks. The reason why I think this counter sucks is because your R is your main DPS skill. Your R is in cooldown half the time. If you're countering with an R, you're doing something wrong because you're not rotating R and S with 100% uptime. If that makes sense, uh, yeah, that's what it is. We're gonna talk about the rotation again, okay? But let's also talk about the builds again, the, exist the existing meta builds and stuff. The true drone's transformation is gonna be 1771 spec minimum. Legendary rune on raid missile and heroic rune on baby drones. This is impossible for NA, so you guys don't need to worry about how much spec like you trying to get to uh, get it up there. So three drone, you only need 1,092 spec. This is raid on legend, and then heroic on baby, and then rare uh, rare ultra on flare. You have to have the full tripod for this because if you don't have the, I mean NA, um, you guys might not have a level five tripod for a while because you guys don't have the uh, enough uh, materials for it, right? But later on, there's no way you should not have a 
level 5 tripod because you only need 3 out of 18. The requirement for 3 drone transformation is actually a lot less. It's only 1092 spec. But spec is very important and I'll talk about it in a bit. Let's also talk about runes too. So Gale Wind is S. S is very mo uh, the most important one because it's the longest. And then you have A and R are the exact same thing, which is the bus, uh, burst blow and then excelling on beam. And then you have the E skill for another Gale Wind rune if you want. So these are the three runes that you're going to put. I'm pretty sure most people are going to put uh, overwhelm, on, uh, overwhelm rune on Energy Buster for additional stagger. No one's going to have two runes. It's going to be three. You have to have three runes and you have to have, I think you would need to have the tripods and all so that you guys can transform, focus on transforming because two drone transform is, transformation is impossible. Um, going back, that means you have, you will have two skills that you will, you will need to put in uh, runes on. So in this case, for NA case, I think I would put Rage Rune. The reason why I think Rage is a nice rune for Scouter is because he rotates skills uh, very, very often. And that's why some other high-end builds, including me, put two Rage Runes on it. This way. So you just have the max rotation. And then you add in whatever that you want here. So Akan, I, Akan, I take Cleanse Rune. But if I don't need Cleanse Rune, I usually put something like Bleed here. Because your Bleed stack is almost infinite. So Quick Recharge, I tested it out. I've been using it as well. Quick Recharge sucks. It doesn't work. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is because this particular class, your cooldown goes, goes down by a flat 0.5% seconds, right? So by the, time, by the time my Quick Recharge pops, my skill's already ready. <laughs> So it doesn't really help. <laughs> I would rather have the Rage Rune uh, to proc as much as I can to get that additional attack speed and then movement speed. And the faster you attack, it's better because you can rotate more skills. And I will also go over, uh, so R and A skill, the Burst Blow, uh, you can actually put Legendary here too. Uh, Legendary here on Burst Blow and then put Heroic on both Excelion Beam and Crimson Breaker. And the reason why you do this is to achieve a specific rotation. Uh, I'm gonna go over that for you. It's a it's a it's a rotation that's really good for newbies. But the re I have it backwards because uh, I have enough attack speed and I have enough uh, transformation and all that stuff. So there are two ways to do it. So uh, I guess a, I guess a decent question I saw was um, conviction judgment doesn't work here because he doesn't use mana. And the cooldown doesn't really benefit him either because he uh, decreases by flat 0.5%. Uh, that works too. Okay, that's summarized under the rune section. Now let's go over the spec build stuff, the combat stat. The reason why this class needs a lot of spec is I can't tell you the exact math, but I tested it out myself. Losing 200 spec makes me lose 19% damage, almost 20% damage. And losing 200 spec also decreases about 15% on energy gain too, core energy gain. So spec is super important. So 1300 spec, you are doing 92.98% uh, on core gain and then 115% uh, on damage. So why is this important? Why am I showing you guys this? If you are going five threes and then lose like 100 spec or 200 spec, you're doing something wrong. You would rather have a solid high quality 4 threes, then a shit quality 5 threes. Because a shit quality 5 three is very, it's it's doable, but a high quality 5 threes expen is expensive, right? So when you guys are building your character, don't prioritize engravings for this class. You always want to prioritize spec first. So that's like the summary that I have for you guys. Let's go to engravings. The class level 1 and 3 are both good, right? Because class level 1 gives you 6% damage. And class level 3 goes 18, uh, gives 18% damage. What class engraving does is when you transform, when you hit your skill, you get a stack for 5 seconds, right? And then if you hit your skills, you get another stack. Every time you land a skill, your stack resets. This means as long as you keep attacking, you have that damage buff. So I have the damage buff for 6%. So let's also talk about the general engravings that the scouter uses, right? So you have Grudge, you have Raid Captain, and then you have Barricade. Why is Raid Captain good? If you transform, you get 30% movement speed from Hypersync. I get 130 from the get-go. And later on, when you guys have 
yearning level two uh, from bards, uh, from, from your supports. Yearning level two gives you 10% uh, from the buff. Scouters gets 140% straight up without doing anything. So Raid Captain is a number one engraving next to Grudge. Now Barricade's also an option too. So he's often shielded than not. So if you press if you press a W button, you're shielded. So you're trying to you're trying to transform for your skills. The shield lasts eight seconds, guys. Like eight seconds, you get shielded, and then you press the Z key. You're shielded again for another oh, 20 seconds. So you are shielded more often than not. Uh, this is as uh, more often as um, the blue gun lancer. The blue gun lancer goes combat stance, and then they get the shield. Right. That's why they go barricade. Barricade is for classes that are shielded almost 100% of the time. So this is a second engraving that is really important too. And then now you have the damage engraving, which is like a keen blunt weapon. You have cursed stall. You have the crit related ones, adrenaline, precision dagger. And then you also have stabilized status. These are the optional engravings that you should think of what you can do. Hitmaster, I see you guys asking about this. That's why I put it in red here. This Hitmaster does not work. You have to read the skills description. So that being said, Let's go to the relic sets. So relic sets, you have two choices. You have hallucination and salvation, but I don't recommend salvation straight up because this class requires crit. His biggest, Scouter's biggest problem is his crit rate. Uh, that's why mo most people don't even use Keen Blunt Weapon. Uh, but the reason why I use Keen Blunt Weapon is because I have level three uh, adrenaline and I have spec crit, spec crit. So, and the hallucination at the same time. So you, you my max uh, crit rate is 22.51 plus, so this particular hallucination level three that I have is 20% plus 20, so it's 28% crit rate. And then if my adrenaline is full proc, it's plus 15. So I have 65.61% 65, 65 crit rate. And if there's a crit synergy, it's a uh, 75%. Keen Blunt is better than Cursed All when it's over 60% crit uh, crit rate. If you want a higher ceiling, Keen Blunt is generally better than Cursed Doll because it doesn't have a penalty. And at the same time, Keen Blunt works really well with Adrenaline. So I don't know why you would not go Keen Blunt with this particular build, but I had Cursed Doll a long time ago. So uh, more crit you have, it's, it's a little better to uh, use Keen Blunt. And the reason why I put Precision Dagger here, you guys are worried about prices. If you guys are sometimes, sometimes, if you guys are using a budget engraving, don't expect to do a lot more damage than the one that have the higher engraving. But um, it is still doable. It is still doable. Now let's talk about the last, uh, last topic, the skill rotation. So the known skill rotation for this particular class is how many S and R's can you squeeze in? So you wanna have at least three of each to get in right so the primary thought process and the reason why this came out is qe for fast stacks additional damage per stack right r and s rotation and qe w rotation for cooldown reduction and a skills the biggest sand weight but it's often used for filler that's why you have a here and you also fill in auto attack for additional fillers so when you transform when you transform you qe and then you s for that stack damage is because to enable, to squeeze that Q in, Q skill in. Afterwards, what you do is when you transform, you do QE, and then you put your S skill, which is your main DPS skill, and then you QR for your next DPS skill. Now you're emptied out, right? When you have one second left-ish kind of thing, uh, I just do all of this naturally because I played it for so long. So basically you do QE, right? And then you press the S button because it's off cooldown. And then you press QR, and then you press W, and then you press QE again. So, but sometimes you see me auto attack. Auto attack actually does decent damage. It just did a million damage when it crit, All right? So usually you just do Q, and then you just fill it in based on the amount of cooldowns you have. So this is it's su it's super simple. I don't even know why I'm talking about this, right? You guys can get this like immediately. One thing you just need to know, Q you have to start and then you press S to use main skill and then you QR, that's it, right? And then you add in the filler, which is A, and then you press QE again. And then your QR or QS is, S usually comes back. It's very simple. So one time that I will be doing wrong is I press the A skill instead of S. That's the only difference. 
There's an easy popular skill rotation where you go Q, R, W, A, Q, E, and then S. And then you go Q, R again, W, A, Q, E, and W, and then you go Q, R, W, A, Q, E, S, and then Q, R, W, A, Q, E. It rotates uh, infinitely, even, even at level 7 gems. This is why uh, Scouter is pretty boring, by the way. <laughs> That's all you do. <laughs> that would be the popular skill rotation. It's, a, it's an infinite rotation. This is an infinite rotation that is well known in the uh, Korean community. But this, the reason why this is here is the maximum amount of skills you can squeeze in. 8 Qs, 8 Qs, 6 Ws, 4 Es, 4 Rs, 2 As, and 3 Ss. And then the second one needs to be rotated after you transform back because the S skill is going to be on cooldown. So check this out. So I transform and I transform back. My S skill is still on cooldown. So I can't rotate it. That, therefore, you start with QE and then you go, you, go S, you go W and then you go QR. But long story short, uh, rotation, just press, just press something that's off cooldown and always make sure your S and R is on 100% uptime. Yeah, TLDR, just spam. But spam uh, responsibly. <laughs> okay, so I think that covers everything. Uh, I, I think I've seen some questions on the chat, but it's usually the build stuff that is not important. Uh, because if you just if you just think about it generally, you just choose accordingly. Uh, I don't think there's any other questions though. I did finish talking about it. We talked about it for a bit. Will you share document? Uh, this document is going to be on the YouTube description. Okay, so I mean, Scouter is a super, super easy class. Like, uh, separately, you know, the engravings, engravings, uh, easy. You only need three tripods. That don't need that many runes. You don't need that many spec to transform faster. You don't use that much, uh, pots because uh, you'll be shielded most of the time. It's a very, very nice class for beginners. Uh, and I recommend this class to most people, unless it's not fun for you. Sometimes when you play this class, you'll feel like you're cheating because it's so cheap. But if it's not fun for you, don't play it. Because sometimes I play this class and I bust uh, and I play a con. I play these high level raids. Uh, most of the classes that are playing with me uh, spent at least six times or seven times more uh, money at least to be on that specific raid. This is the cheapest class uh, that you can get all the content with. With that being said, that concludes it. That concludes the video. All right, so with that being said, this concludes the video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, YouTube frogs. <laughs>